All right, so today I wanted to do something a little different. I'm gonna be walking everyone through what's known in the olive industry as an olive cutting. Very similar to a coffee cupping or a wine tasting, we're gonna be comparing Pearl's olives to that other brand out there that you might be finding on the shelf. Now my hope here today is not only to teach you a thing or two about ripe black olives, but to help you understand maybe why you think you don't like olives. So the first thing I always like to do here is take a look at the can itself. It could often tell you a lot about what's inside. Are there any dents? What does the label look like? How is the packaging? These here you can see they're California grown and American made. What they put on the packaging often matters. Looking at our other brand can here, you can see that there's some dents in it, uh, the label slightly coming off. There's nothing on it telling you where the olives are exactly from. So one of the important things to think about when you're looking at olives is to understand that an olive is a fruit. The minute that fruit is removed, the quality starts to degrade. Usually you only have about a 12 hour window to get the fruit from the tree into a suspended brine. These other olives are often handled four or five times as much, bouncing around in a truck or a shipping container, sitting out in open air, not in a solution. So it's important to choose an olive that goes from the tree to the can through the entire process process as quickly as possible. So when you're doing an olive cutting, it's always nice to do it in a white bowl or plate so that way you could thoroughly inspect the olives and the brine that they're sitting in. What we're gonna be looking for here is the color of the brine, the quality of the olives. We could also take note of the smell that's coming off of these. It's sweet, it's buttery, it's not metallic at all. These are all really good signs. Then with the other guys, we're gonna be looking at the same thing. You can see right away, it's a much darker brine. You can see the olives are smashed. They're not all whole. The brine is really dark and murky. There's a lot of olive debris floating around in that entire mix. Some of the olives are even in pieces. Some of the stems are still attached to the olive and there's just a drastic difference in smell. These olives from Pearl smell buttery, clean, delicious, something I wanna eat. These other olives over here smell a little murky, metallic-y, just not very pleasant. Now you may be wondering how you get two such drastically different things from the same fruit. Well, it's not really the same fruit. So traditionally speaking, these types of olives are always made with a fruit known as manzanilla olives. It's a less fibrous olive, lower oil content, and really lends itself to this oxidation and blackening process that these olives undergo. Now Pearls has always continued to use manzanilla in the olives, ensuring that they have a far superior product. So somewhere along the line, these other guys figured out that it was much cheaper to use a different variety of olives, something called Hoja Blanca. Those olives are much cheaper, they have a higher oil content, and they're better suited for olive oil, not black olive curing. Because of that, these often undergo more chemical treatment, a different curing process, and it leads to a different flavor and texture. Now I know with pearls, they're always going to use manzanilla olives. Now the name black olive is actually a misnomer. All olives start out green, and through an oxidation process, lye oxidizes the green olive, removing the bitterness and turning it into a jet black color. Normally this process takes around seven days, but some other brands have found some shortcuts to do it in a short three day process. That often means more chemicals and a rubbery fibrous texture. As we cut into the middle of these, you'll see exactly what I mean. So the center of an olive should actually be light brown, buttery, soft, and delicious. This comes from that long seven day curing process. And that shorter three day cure will often leave the olive tough, fibrous and with a dark gray metallic center. And looking side by side, you can immediately tell the difference between these two all. And now for the actual taste test. Clean, buttery, rich, soft and tender. Not too salty, not briny, no metallic flavor. That's a good olive. And then we go in for the other guys. Well, let me tell you. Metallic, tough, rubbery, fibrous, all of those things that people associate when they say they don't like olives, they're just used to eating olives like this from all of the other brands. Now when someone says they don't like olives, I'm willing to bet most of their experience of eating olives has probably come from these other brands. A different fruit, a shorter oxidation and curing process leading to 
just a not very good tasting product. Now, whenever shopping or buying a product, I always like to consider three things, quality, jobs, and the planet. I know Pearls here is only going to use manzanilla olives. They're going to ensure a long, proper seven day cure, leading to a much better quality product. These other guys, not so much. Jobs, well, Pearls, it says right on the can, grown here in California 100% of the time, and American made, keeping jobs right here, supporting local farmers and growers. These other guys shipping olives in and purchasing olives from overseas, picking them long off the tree before they're processed and turned into a canned product. Last, leading to the planet, that carbon footprint of transporting olives so far for such a long period of time leaves a much larger impact on the planet and the environment. So that's why I can always trust Pearls and the Musco Family Olive Company to take a good thing and make it even better.